So let's say you hire the wrong realtor. What could really go wrong? Well, there's a couple of things that are pretty bad. The first one is if you're hiring somebody to sell your house and it doesn't sell, you've wasted time. The next thing is you might have lost a lot of money as a buyer if you overpaid for the property or as a seller if the agent undersold the property. In both cases, it's cost you a lot of money, but neither of those are actually the worst. The worst is getting caught up in a costly and time-consuming litigation because you ended up in a contract with a buyer or seller that breached their contract and now is litigating and you're stuck in this for a year and it could potentially cost you $20,000, $50,000 or more money. So how do you avoid that? So here are the five questions you need to ask any realtor before you hire them to either buy or sell a house for you. First one is, how many years have you been a realtor? Second one, how many houses did you sell last year? Third one, what's your percentage of buyer business to seller business that you did last year? The next one is, what's your specific track record in this town and in this neighborhood that I'm looking in? And the last one is, am I gonna work specifically with you or with somebody else on your team? So there you have it. You can click off the video because you got the questions, but if you'd like to hear more in depth about them, stick around. My name is DJ Tenhove. I'm a realtor here in New Jersey, and here on the channel, we make videos about home buying, selling, or investing. So if you have questions about any of that, this is definitely the right place for you, and I'm sure there's a video here that will solve your problem. So let's get into it. So the first question is, how many years have you been a realtor? And the question I get all the time is like, why does that matter? But it really matters because if you're a brand new realtor that just got their license, maybe in the last year to two years, You've only known the market that you're in right now, which is not the market of tomorrow. It's not the market of five years from now. So if you have an agent who's tenured, who's been doing this for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and they have a proven track record, they know exactly how to sell your house in any market, the up cycle or the down cycle. Number two, how many houses did you sell last year? Now, this question could be asked of buyer's agents or selling agents, listing agents, because again, it shows you what their actual track record is within the last 12 months. This is really important in the market we're in right now of 2023 because the inventory is so short. So most agents' businesses have severely diminished since 2022 and dramatically since 2019. But if you have an agent who is outperforming the average agent in the country, you know you have a superstar on your hands that understands how to buy or sell in this specific market. So let me give you a frame of reference. The average licensed real estate agent, of which there are 3 million in the entire country, the average licensed real estate agent does between three and five transactions a year. Now, if you do the math on that, that is not a career that you can truly sustain a household off of. So you need to find somebody who does dozens of transactions a year and can still give you the personal attention that you're looking for. The third question is, what is the breakdown of your business? Do you help more buyers or sellers? And that's a really important question to ask nowadays because there are teams. And I'll get to the team question in a few, but if an agent has specifically buyer side business to the tune of 90% of their business is helping out buyers and you're hiring them as a listing agent, that might be a disconnect. They might not have the skill set it takes to move your property on the listing side of the business and vice versa. If somebody is an 80%, 60% listing heavy agent, they may not have the time in their schedule or the flexibility to want to go out and show you 10, 15 houses and negotiate for you as a buyer. So understanding the breakdown of their business will show you First of all, what their track record has been, but also what they enjoy doing and are more successful at. Now, if you hire a listing agent to help you as a buyer, they might have somebody on their team to help you out with that, which gets into our next question, which is, am I gonna be working specifically with you or am I gonna work with somebody on your team? So in our example, most of the agents on our team are able to do listings and buyers, but some of our agents are specialists. Me, for example, I'm a listing specialist. So if you wanna sell a house, I'm the guy you're looking for. If you wanna have somebody help you buy a house, it wouldn't be me at this point. It would be somebody else on my team who truly specializes in helping buyers in this current market. Now they might do listings as well, but if they're buyer side heavy, like I mentioned before, that gives you the confidence to know that they understand what it takes to get a buyer deal accepted in this current market. And in many cases, they are making the market, not just participating in it. So that gets us to our last question, which is what is your specific track record in this this neighborhood and in this town. And this is super important on the listing side of the business because again, I could be a great listing agent and I could have sold homes elsewhere in the county or elsewhere in the state. But if I haven't sold in your specific town or neighborhood, I might not understand a couple things. One, how to impress upon a buyer what a great town it is, how good the school district is, and all the ins and outs of your neighborhood. It also means that I might not understand something specific to your house. 
For example, I live in Colts Neck, New Jersey, which is all septic and well. And if I have an agent who I'm hiring, who's a listing agent, who's never sold a property with septic systems in it, they're gonna struggle dramatically to try to sell that property when buyers keep coming to them with questions of why would I buy a house that has a septic system? Or I don't wanna buy a house with a septic system because I want public water and public sewer. So making sure you have somebody who has track record in your specific neighborhood is super important on the listing side. But on the buy side of the business, this is also important in a market like we're in today where it's uber competitive. If I know that my buyer's agent has gotten five deals accepted in this specific part of town in the last 12 months, I know they understand that market and they know percentage over asking price, what terms, what pressure points they need to push on in order to make sure that my offer gets accepted over somebody else's in this neighborhood. I have two bonus questions, both for buyer's agents and for listing agents. But since you found this helpful and you're still here, I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot and I greatly appreciate it. All right, bonus question number one for buyer's agents. This is an agent you're hiring to help you buy a house. And that question is, what do you do different to help find houses that currently aren't on the market for me? This is a big question to 2023 right now where there's so little inventory. You need to know that your realtor is not just looking on the MLS, because again, you can do that on Zillow, right? You can see a property that hits the market on Zillow, truly a realtor.com, the agent's website, wherever you want to do it, you can register and get those notifications. And in case you don't know it, MLS stands for multiple listing system. This is the system that realtors have used for decades to market properties between different brokerages. It's also the system that feeds out to Zillow where you see the properties on the internet. Getting an offer accepted is part of the challenge, but finding a property is equally hard. What is that agent doing to find things that aren't currently for sale? And that would mean door knocking, doing networking events to try to make sure they're meeting with other people in the community who might be looking to sell but aren't willing to put their house on the market right now because they don't have a place to go. So get an answer from that agent of what they're specifically doing to find houses for people off market and are they having success at matchmaking their buyers off market with properties. The second bonus question is to ask an agent who's helping you buy a property is, do you have access to off-market opportunities? And if so, how do I get access to them? So again, in a market where there's little inventory, you need to make sure that you're open to opportunities that aren't currently on the market. And that could be pocket listings, which is another way of saying that a seller doesn't want to openly advertise their property out to the entire market. Or it could just be sellers that the buyer knows are looking to sell, but aren't willing to put it up on the market yet because either they're fixing things up or they don't know where they're going to buy yet, so they don't want to put the house on the market and then end up homeless. In our situation, we are willing to open up our buyers to our off-market opportunities. And example, we have 35 properties on a board today sitting in our office of all sellers we know who are going to list in the next six to 12 months, but aren't willing to put them publicly on the market yet. We give our buyers who work exclusively with us access to those opportunities because we know that they're dedicated and in an exclusive relationship with us. So make sure you ask that of the realtor you're hiring is, do you have those opportunities and what do I have to do to get access to? those. All right, I have two more bonus questions for you, but this time they're on the side of if you're hiring somebody as a listing agent to sell the house for you. So the first one is, what is your list price to sales price ratio? So this means if I listed your house for a million dollars, but I sold it for $700,000, I'd have a 70% listing price to sales price ratio, which is trash, by the way. But if you ask an agent to give you that track record, both historically over their entire career and over the last four or five years, it will give you a very clear picture of how they price properties and what their success rate is in actually moving homes. Because again, in this market, it's hard to remember this, but in a normal market, 60% of properties that are listed with licensed realtors expire. That means they make it to the end of their contract, which is usually six months, and they haven't sold. That means you failed. The realtor failed. The house is still on the market and it hasn't sold. And worse, it's been on the market. So now when you relist it the next time, you have all that past history working against you. The goal when you're selling your house is to sell it in the first week if you optimally can for the most amount of money you possibly can. And an agent's track record will tell you that. So for example, if an agent has 105% list price to sales price ratio, it means they sell them quickly and it means they sell them 5% on average over asking price, which is more money in your pocket. The second bonus question, and I'm sure you wouldn't have forgotten gotten this one anyway, because everybody asks it is, what is your commission rate? But more importantly, when you ask that of a listing agent is, what do I get in return for that? And what you're alluding to in that question is, what is your marketing strategy? What are you actually going to do for me to make sure my property gets moved? The commission rate is less important than their success rate. All right. I want to give you three real world scenarios of what could happen if you choose to hire the wrong realtor to sell your house. Let's assume you have a million dollar property and you're picking between three different options. Option number one is, I'm not gonna hire a realtor, I'm just gonna do this myself for sell by owner. 
First of all, you should know that those properties sell for eight to 10% less than homes represented by realtors. But let's say you decide to go that route. It's a million dollar house. That means the net to you is somewhere between 920 and $900,000 when you walk away at the closing table. Option number two is let's say that you decide to hire a discount broker, which is an agent who has a decent track record, but they're charging a 4% commission rate, so you have to pay less money to that realtor. Well, a million dollar house sold at $1 million means that that person is gonna net you $960,000. Pretty good. So let's go to option three, which is if you decide to hire a premium full service broker who has a tremendous track record in your neighborhood and crushes it. Now, if you sold that same million dollar house and pay them a 6% commission, that's gonna net you $940,000, which again is $20,000 less than if you hired the discount broker. But that's with one really big assumption. That's with the assumption that a premium full service broker is gonna sell this house at the exact same price that the discount broker does. And we all know that that's not always the case. When you hire the premium broker, you're likely doing that because they have a track record of selling houses 5, 10, 15% over asking price and very quickly. So again, let's think about the math now. If that agent sells that property for a million 40, and you pay 6% commission on it, you're netting $977,000, which is a full $17,000 more in your pocket, despite paying a higher commission rate because they got you a better result. So whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I would love if you would click the link in the description down below and set up a call with me and my team. We would love to help you. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.